Hey there! Thanks for taking a look at this. This time around I'd like to talk about Scout Knives, Boy Scout Knives, and how they were originally meant to be carried. And I'm talking about you know, really old Scout Knives back in the early days of Scouting. So ever since the Scouts offered an official Scout Knife uh, in 1911, you're looking at it, most of them have had a bail or a shackle. This wire loop pinned to the back uh, opposite end of the main blade. Um, with just a couple of exceptions, most of the four-bladed equal in utility knives offered by the scouting organization as official scout knives have always had a shackle. And so um, obviously that's for hanging the knife off of something. What? A, a clip or chain or rope? So I got curious uh, as to how that actually worked. Back in the day when, you know, scouts might have been carrying some of these early scout knives that I collect. I do remember uh, my son was in scouts, and I was a scout leader for a number of years while he was in the scout program. And I do remember that this was uh, the belt that the boys wore. This was actually my son's belt I was able to find. And it uh, has a brass buckle here and kind of a um, olive green drab kind of a olive green drab belt and I do remember them having little brass uh, slides with hooks that uh, boys could hang equipment off of although I never remember any of the boys in either of the two troops that my son was involved in actually doing that but I was able to find a equipment catalog from 1925 a scouting equipment catalog from 1925 so here's the cover of it and if you look really carefully maybe I can kind of do a zoom feature or something uh, the boy on the front with the blanket you can see that he has something hanging from his belt sure looks like a knife to me um, this, cat this catalog course showed equipment but it, it was also very heavy on information about the uniform you know the proper uniforms the proper way to wear them and things like that so here's a page official uniforms of the Boy Scouts of America and uh, on the right there, I guess that's outfit H. If you look carefully again, uh, that boy is wearing a very similar belt to the modern one I just showed you with a knife hanging from the right side. So he would be presumably be right-handed. Um, here's another page, outdoor service outfits. And um, if you look at service outfit A, the one with the shorts there on the right, um, you don't see a knife in that picture, but down below where it describes service outfit A, uh, one of the um, pieces of equipment there is the official belt, and it costs all of 50 cents. Uh, it also says it's described uh, further uh, later in the catalog, so we can go to a page that says just look down here, and the first item on that page is the official belt. Now it's described as a khaki belt, one and a half inches wide, with a gunmetal scout buckle and two belt hooks for carrying knife and rope were included. The whole thing cost 50 cents. If you wanted an extra hook, it's 10 cents. If you wanted an extra buckle, it was 15 cents. But what struck me about that was um, it was different. It was not brass, it was a gunmetal, so in a, in a khaki colored belt. So I went on eBay and I started looking for those and I found several, but I also found there's really kind of two types of really early scout belts. And the first one depicted in the 1910 or 1911 handbook, I'll have to put that on the screen which, is, which one's correct, is a leather belt with a round buckle that kind of interlocks and the belt is in two pieces. It's got metal rings at the sides where I guess you would hang equipment from those rings. I think that's really kind of the early British version from the British Scouts. And soon the American Boy Scouts moved to this other type. Um, because this is what's depicted in the 1925 equipment catalog. Um, the sellers on eBay will say this is either from the 1930s or the 1940s. Um, at first I wasn't sure which, but I was pretty sure that it was pre-World War II and would be appropriate for my pre-World War II uh, scout knife collection. Uh, I was able to find separately a vintage uh, hook. 
Uh, I don't know exactly what when this was made, but it sure looks appropriate for the time. Uh, I was able to take a look at this a little more carefully and determine the date. So on the back here, you can see that this says Boy Scouts of America, and there's a patent number. I think this is an opportunity for Super Zoom. Patent number 185, 1850944. Uh, so I went to Google Patents, and with Google Patents, you can just type in the country and the patent number, and lo and behold, you get the, not only the information on the patent, but you get visuals too. So here's the original patent application. Um, let me look at my notes here. I can tell you a little more about it. It was filed uh, March 16, 1929 by an Albert Sanders. Uh, it takes him a while to grant a patent. A couple years later, geez, like three years later, uh, March 22, 1932, they granted the application, and so it would have expired most likely March 22, 1949, 17 years later. So definitely a, a, a buckle from the 30s or the 40s, like the eBay sellers say, and most likely a pre-World War II piece of scouting equipment. So it's just perfect for my collection. So the way this works is like this. Um, this would just slide on the side of the belt. You know, you could keep it there or slide it all the way around if you were a lefty, I guess. And uh, this end has um, kind of a cap. It would have been brass or gun metal like this one. The buckle actually just clamps onto the raw end of the um, belt here. It's got teeth here, you can see, and this just clamps down and holds it fast. And then you pass this side through, and um, there's a slide here, kind of a uh, knurled bar inside. You push it over, and it holds it fast. You want to take the belt off, you just slide it that way, and out it comes. So if you've ever, you know, if you were ever in scouting, you probably wore one of these and are very familiar with it. So that's how they worked. Fumble around here, yeah. And so, um, the other thing I want to show you in that 1925 equipment catalog is a page that uh, says, uh, here's what you need. It shows uh, the different scout knives over there on the right-hand side. The first one they show is the Remington. And so they show a Remington with an acorn shield, which would have been appropriate for 1925. This was Remington's very first scout knife that they entered the scout knife market with in 1923, and it was the one that was available in 1925. So um, that's absolutely appropriate for uh, that catalog, 1925. And again, this buckle, you know, maybe a little after 1925, this belt and buckle, but it looks just like the one they showed in the catalog. The other knife that they show there, too, was the other fairly new entrant into the Scout market, the Ulster. And it's the very first version of the Ulster. Uh, you see a lot of these that are the second version. I don't think people understand the differences, but this one was only made from, by Ulster from, by, from 1923 to 1926. It has smooth bolsters, not does not have lines, and there's some other differences, too. This is actually one of my rare Scout knives. Uh, but it's shown in the catalog appropriately with the smooth bolsters. That would have been the Ulster that a kid could have had back in 1925. And then they show the second version of the New York Knife Company knife. So New York Knife Company was the very first to have a scout knife in 1911 uh, with this huge oversized bale. And um, they had a lock on the market up until 1923. And then 1923, the scouting organization... I uh, had Remington and Ulster come in and offer knives alongside a New York Knife Company. Um, so this is the second version uh, with this banner shield, Be Prepared, here, and a detachable veil. And I think that's the one they're showing in the catalog. It's hard to tell, but I think I see the banner shield there, which would have really been incorrect because in 1923, when Ulster and Remington came into the market, New York Knife Company started putting this type of shield on this knife. This is a little different model. I don't have this model with this shield, but uh, in 1925, that's what you would have had. So they're showing kind of an outdated knife there uh, from New York Knife Company. But they're showing another couple of knives from New York Knife Company. And those are the, um, one of them is the Swell End Jack that has the sheepfoot's blade. That would have been this uh, number 105. 
and then they're also showing this equal ended bolstered knife with just two blades one of them being a uh, large clip and the other one being this combo tool can opener cap lifter um, that's the number 1450 those are really rare knives i've yet to see one on the market that i could try to buy so um, i don't have any of those it's kind of funny that they don't even call the New York Knife Company knives, you know, by name. They just show uh, these three additional knives down under the Remington and the Ulster. Just kind of second billing. And they don't even say who makes them. So this looks pretty much like exactly what a boy would have been wearing on his uh, waist and the way he was carrying his knife back in 1925. Let's just take this Remington and put it on there. Pop it on there, and lay it out. That's uh, that's exactly the way a kid would have been carrying his knife around, just like it showed in the handbook. And personally, that would have uh, made me crazy to have a knife flopping around, bouncing around in the front of my pelvis all the time. But you know, these knives were really nice knives, and um, you know, they were like a dollar fifty by today's standards. It's laughably, you know, low price, but you got to understand that was a lot of money back then, and people didn't have a lot of money, and uh, these were high quality knives. So if you bought your young boy one for scouting, you didn't want him to lose it right away. Well, knives have a way of getting out of kids' pockets and getting lost. So this is a way to keep them at hand, ready to go, secure, where they wouldn't lose them. And I guess it probably made the the kid feel real pretty pretty cool, you know, to have some gears put on his belt, maybe, you know, some twine or rope over here. Uh, really just kind of a, a neat way to outfit a kid. I've, I've enjoyed trying to find this and, and research it. Uh, I know that's a lot of scout minutia, uh, you know, very detailed information about some old scout equipment, but um, I just love this kind of stuff, and I'm going to display one of my pre-World War II scout knives with this belt so people can see how they were carried back in the day. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching that. And as always, have fun collecting.